Yo, 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 welcome you back to the only hip hop show. Views and comments No disclaimer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no I am your host, LeRon Pierce. And I'm here with the only hip hop squad. Psych. <laughs> they left you hanging, nigga. Yeah, they left me hanging, all right. But yeah, due to uh, unforeseen events, the only hip hop squad will not be here tonight. Let's just pray for them, you know what I'm saying? They will be back next week, so. Let's just get into it real quick. Um, before I even talk about the hip hop man, I'm just gonna go ahead and introduce this brother right here. When I first met this brother through another show, um, Be Life Driven Show, I engineered that show actually. Shout out to DJ Quest Coast who was was, was um, DJing for the show for the only hip hop show at the time. So, and I met this brother. He engine, and uh, he's the the engineer that mixed and mastered the records. And I'm just like, wait a minute. The list goes on like to Michael Jackson, to the newest artist Anthony Smith, Mary J. Blige, you name it. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you the man himself, Mr. Trey Harris in the motherfucking building. How you doing, brother? Good, man. How you doing, LeBron? Man, I'm just chilling, brother, man. Um. So let's go ahead and talk about this uh, hip hop minute here. Like, right? I just now uh, looked looked at hiphopdx.com. You can go ahead and check it out. Hiphopdx.com. See murder. I haven't seen. I ain't even heard this guy in years. Like <laughs> this motherfucker. Like really, bro? This is two chains. We call it two stains. Damn. <laughs> I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read this article. All right. All right. C Murder responded to his Hip Hop DX tweets about his Two Stains diss track. Oh, so he made a song Two Stains. Just Two Stains. I don't know what this is about, but we're gonna get into it right now. Hip Hop DX Two Chains. That ain't no response. True. So that's uh, coming from. C murder. Okay. I mean, C murder. I believe. No, two chains. Two chains. So no, no, no. C murder. He also replied in a similar fashion to a post from Hip Hop Early. Lame response. True lot. True for life. Then two chains took the Instagram. Took on his Instagram. And responded this. Man, my partner just notified me that C murder made a diss song about me. Two chains said, that hard, that's hard as fuck. See, murder always been hard as fuck. True. <laughs> that's all he said. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Wow, that is crazy. But what you think about it, bro? Bro, I didn't even know that was going on until you just I, broke the news two I minutes just, ago. I just read this, bro. I, I just read this. I didn't know. I thought C. Murder about was it. still locked up. I didn't know anything about it. Like I just read about. It. I didn't even know that he this two chains. I, I didn't, didn't even know, know he was free. I didn't even know he was in jail. I thought he was out of jail. I thought he. Was I in thought jail. he was still in jail. That's all I'm That's saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, what the hell is going on, this month? He pulled a Gucci and made a tape yeah. in the jail. <laughs> oh, we got Rocky Fresh. His album is coming out. Well, mixtape. It is called The Night I Went To. It will be released. She said date. That doesn't say. Well, he says he's going to announce the, uh, the mix. He says announced the mixtape uh, today. And he just released uh, some songs from last year. I Need and Tell Me. So... If you don't know anything about Rocky Fresh, he was signed to uh, WMG, yeah, Maybach Music Group with Rick Ross, right, Wale, right, right. and McMill, who took so many L's in 2015. <laughs> Just a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead and get to this interview, bro. Yeah, all right. Man. So I got a question for you. What's like, up, man? So as mixing these records. I trying to mix some records from from my boys, right? Yeah. And for myself, like, what would you do? Like, you would prefer like had the vocals overpowering the beat, or or just have them together? Like, um, I mean, it's kind of like a mixture of both. You, the most important part of the song is the vocal, you know. So you do want to have the vocal above the beat, but not too much above it. 
right. um, you don't want it too uneven, too unbalanced, but a good mixture can give you a little bit of both worlds, you know, so he can have the beat banging for you and the music nice and loud and all that, but the vocal's still sitting right in the middle, perfectly right on top of it too, but not overbearing, you know what I'm saying? So Okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, we got a caller on the line. Caller, you on the air with the Only Hip Hop Show, with the Only Hip Hop Squad. We got Trey Harris in the building. What's your name? Where you calling from? What up, LP? It's your boy Dane Diesel in the oh, building. Oh, shit. Dane Diesel. Him, the man himself. How you doing, brother? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. Y'all looking good on the screen as well, my brother. Man, What's up, Trey? Man. What's going on? How you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. My, much apologies, my brother. Uh, due to some unforeseen situations, we weren't able to make it in tonight. But I definitely want to make sure I reached out, touched bases with you real quick. Let you know I muchly appreciate the work that you're doing out there, my brother. Appreciate it, dude. Not, not a problem at all. Thanks for calling in. I did have a question for you, though, yeah. real quick. Go ahead. I want to know who is your favorite person to work with? All right, well, here's the thing, though. On the mixing world, though, a lot of the times you're not necessarily in the studio with the artist. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. So, like, if I was a recording engineer, which I do that, too. I've worked on the recording side. I would say my favorite artist I've ever worked with is Mary J. Blige. And uh, we did the last album called The London Sessions. We did that, we did that out in London um, a couple years ago. I was with uh, Rodney Jerkins. And uh, she's amazing. She's the, the most talented singer I work with. Um... Effortless, like she'll do the whole song in like 20 minutes. She just kills it. But uh, talent-wise and speed-wise, she she's she's amazing. So I would say that would be the best artist I work with on the recording side. A lot of times on the mixing side, though, um, we mix in our own studio, and then uh, once the song is done, we send it out um, so that the client can hear it on their own speakers or in their own car because they know those sound, they know that sound, they know those speakers much better than if they came in our room. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, I've worked with plenty of artists in my time, but I would say Mary J. Blige is probably the the best and the most talented on the recording side for sure man that's pretty dope and pretty interesting now last question yeah i go to a lot of studio sessions and i often hear artists talking to engineers like yeah make it make it cloudy you know or <laughs> you know or make it you know i want it to sound like you know i'm i'm, I'm echoey like what's what's that noise that's making it sound like i'm in a big hall so real quick my brother can you just give us a uh uh a crash course into just some uh, basic, and I mean very basic, uh, mm -hmm. recording uh, terminology. Oh, that's, I mean, that's the funny thing. I'm, I'm glad you described it like that because there really isn't no set vocabulary for, you know, what we do. As a good engineer, your job is to interpret what the artist is trying to say. So if he says make it cloudy, that means to me he wants like a radio effect, a little muffled sound on it with a lot of maybe reverb in the background, for instance, to make it big and airy, you know? So if they say make it warm, that might mean that they want it to have more low end and less brightness so it's not as brittle, you know, a little bit more bottom end. Um, make it crispy would be more top end, more high end. These are not necessarily words where it's in a book where you could just look it up, you know what I'm saying? But when you've been around the block enough, you know what I'm saying, you know what they mean and what they're trying to say. So you hear it so many times, you know exactly what they're asking for. So yeah, you just, you know, you knock it out for them. So yeah. Hey, excellent, excellent. Now, last but not least. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite hip hop album to listen to? Now, and, and as an engineer, I, I kind of want you to throw in, you know, the importance of it being sonically, yeah. uh, quote unquote, sound, no pun intended. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I got all, all time. We talking all time? Uh, I mean, in no particular order. Yeah, yeah, okay. You can go all time. All right, well, I will say one of my favorite. And it's also a classic already. Reasonable Doubt Jay-Z is obviously, everybody already calls it hands down a classic album, but sonically is incredible. And it, I think it was way ahead of its time. Um, the mixing on that album is perfect. And I, I listen to it all the time in my car. I just get in the car and drive around LA a lot and just listen to that album. Um, it's just, just check it out. Next time you're listening, don't don't listen to the lyrics next time. Try to listen to the sonics and the, the mixing and the placement of the sounds and the levels and all that. But uh, Reasonable Doubt, I think, is probably one of the best mixed um, albums that I've ever heard as far as hip hop you know records go. And then, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, mixed by Ali's killing it right now. That's um, oh, yeah. Kendrick, you know, Kendrick's dude. Kendrick, yeah, yeah, so he's been doing the last couple albums. Um, I'm a big Kendrick fan, so the last album to Pimple Butterfly. Production wise and mix wise and lyrically, like one of my all time favorite hip hop albums, actually. You know, so uh, and big, you know, Kendrick's doing big things with the Grammy nominations, you know what I'm saying? So he's killing it right now. But uh, yeah, yeah, so, you know, the Kendrick stuff is cred uh, incredible. The uh, Jay Z stuff, the um, the, that, like I said, Reasonable Doubt is incredible to me. 
Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm a big fan as a, as the art and then also as a critic. You know, I listen to albums. I'm like, yo, that sounds sonically. That sounds amazing. You know, so. Excellent, excellent. Well, I know I said last and not least last time, but just to let all the, the <laughs> hey, artists man, out there, keep on going, all, bro. <laughs> future people know, like, let them know what your pet peeve is, because I know as a as a a, a, a camera guy, sometimes I, I be having my pet peeves with artists. So I'm just curious yeah. if you, as a as a recording engineer or as a mixing engineer, if you have any pet peeves. All right, well, yeah, like sessions. Number one, um, don't distort your vocals when you record. Like, once it's distorted you can't get rid of it you know what i'm saying so it's really important as a hip-hop you know what i'm saying as a rapper or a singer or whatever you are any type of artist like capture the moment at a great quality level because once it's captured you can't really i mean we could do some things here and there with the mix but we can't really restore distorted ass vocals you know what i'm saying so turn it down and then let us turn it up because we'll do it in a way where it's not distorted so distorted vocals is always a pet peeve of mine um just just sessions where it's just you know unorganized and just messy like organization organization is the key with the, with this engineering stuff and the, the the dope the best recording engineers the best mixing engineers are the ones that are the most organized so keep your sessions organized and clean with not you know a bunch of old vocal edits and old takes you know what i'm saying hide and make all that stuff inactive and just organization and keep stuff clean and yeah i mean but yeah distorted vocals would definitely be my biggest pet peeve man because that's that drives me crazy man. man hey trey well that was it was good to know that man i'm glad that you was able to stop by the only hip-hop show with us tonight um i'm glad you was able to serve up some good game for all you rappers for all you future artists out there you know so if you ever plan on working with trey you already know his pet peeves and you already know what he gonna do <laughs> that's everybody's pet peeves nice. I, I ain't the only one that's gonna be every other legend did too <laughs> hey with there it is, everybody. Now you know. Stop distorting your vocals. Well, I'm gonna let y'all get back to it. Uh, y'all handle it. What y'all do? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to call in a little bit later again. But y'all make it a great evening. I'll be in touch with y'all soon, man. I appreciate right, it. Thanks for calling in, man. Peace. Peace. Well, let's go ahead and get back into it. You know what I'm saying? So, also, I've um, I'm just gonna say. So I have a session. Mm-hmm when I mix and master my own records, I want to sound like clear as possible. Like, okay. Cause when, um, cause what I do is like, do you master, um, do you actually master, um, songs in Pro Tools? Or you I mean, I mix, I, mastering, believe it or not, uh, a lot of people don't realize it's like actually another type of engineering too you got recording right, engineers right. you got mixing engineers you got mastering right. engineers but yeah I'm, I'm mixed i understand mastering i don't personally do it but um mastering engineers do not use pro tools no they use some software i've never seen in my life i forgot what it's called but they're usually pc based too they're not even on okay. apple yeah but uh yeah because i noticed um when i was in lars mm -hmm. they used uh wave lab to uh, okay to master um, songs. Oh, word. Okay. Yeah, because that's that's what get that good quality. Gotcha. Okay. But the mix, the mix is everything. Because once you once you level out the the mastering part, because that's mm -hmm. when it brings out the compressions, the EQs, right. and and the levelers. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. that was that's key. So and, yeah. and the limiting. So that's that's the key. mixing is definitely the key. Yeah. That's yeah. that's where that's the part of the that's the stage where the song really comes together. It's already, you know, what I'm saying it's already been recorded and produced and it's in its rough state, you know. And then they send it to a mixer to you know bring it to life, you know what I'm saying? And uh, right. And that's when the like you said the vocal comes out more and it just the song is just finished, you know what I'm saying? Of course. So yeah, that's that's the important part, bro. Yeah. So um. Cause normally what what engineers what I do is like what I've learned um, to like um, bring the, the the music the whole the whole thing down mm -hmm. to a six like negative six six dB. Okay. Because so you can get a little headroom so you can right. give it to the master engineer yeah. to make so to, to master it. Itself. I see. What you, so you're talking about the two track like when you cut your record you bring down the instrumental like six or eight db right exactly yeah and that's a way of not distorting your vocal so you figured right. it out yeah yeah that's what i do too when i would record sessions i bring down the instrumental matter of fact so that we have ahead. headroom matter of fact let me go ahead and go into my pro too real quick you know what i'm saying <laughs> Gonna see what everybody's got his, talking got his about, little you know studio little laptop set up over here. I'm always mass, I'm always mixing records, you know what I'm saying? Okay, that's tight. So man. that's like 
So I, I mix my own records as well. I do everything, mix and master. Mm -hmm. But see, Lars, they taught me how to master in, um, in, in Pro Tools, even oh, though, really? like, I mean, it's I mean, you cool. can do it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's cool. not like you can't do it. You it's, can. it's cool, but it's not the sound that you're looking for. Okay. That's at times. Right, right, right. So no, I when I did, um, my boy Sean August, who else is, who, who's a, a member of the Only Hip Hop Squad, we, we couldn't make it tonight. Mm -hmm. His homeboy, um, K, uh, K Smooth, I actually mixed and mastered his record. Oh, okay. And it sound clear as fuck. <laughs> I was like, jeez. Uh huh. Because when I play, if I play this shit right now, yeah. you'll be like, this shit, I'll oh, okay. be like, looking at me. <laughs> like, so, all right. So, yeah, but like, um, Um, I play guitar now. That's my new hobby. I started that a year ago. So I've always been really musical. Right. And like I said, making beats, like that was my passion. And then somehow, somewhere, I'm still trying to figure out when it switched. I think it's when I moved to LA. I, I started working at Larrabee Studios. Larrabee Studios is like pretty much the top mixing studio on earth. Oh, okay. um, in one room, you got Manny Mariquin. The other room, Jason Joshua. That's who I work with. And then at the time, five, six years ago, Dave Pensado was in the other room. So like literally three of the top mixers on earth were in the same building. So I started working there as an intern and a runner. Um, and then I slowly just transitioned from, you know, making beats and stuff into the mixing world. And then, like I said, I worked with Jason. So I came up as his assistant engineer and then really got my chops up, you know, doing the mixing thing. So I used to hate mixing. That's the funny thing. Like back when I used to make the beats and stuff, I used to love doing that and then hate having to mix it afterwards or whatever. Um, but uh, once you learn, like learn some techniques from some legends and stuff and you really start figuring it out, you know what I'm saying? I started to just fall in love with it and loved it more and more. Now that's what I do. Now I don't, I don't really make beats anymore. You right. know what I'm saying? So it completely flip flop. But uh, yeah, that's how it, it just it just happened. I guess because of where I work, I was a product of my environment. I guess you know so. Yeah, so um, what kind of plugins do you use? Because I have a whole bunch of plugins <laughs> that I don't even use, but I use like industry based ones. Yeah, right? okay. Um, I mean, I use everything, man. Like, the more plugins, the better. I use hardware gear also, um, like analog summing or whatever. But uh, plugin wise, I love UAD. UAD, I think, makes the best plugins out there. Um, you know, I try to get some of those, but. Man. Well, they they require hardware to run too, so you, it yeah. ain't just software. Right. If you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, yeah, UAD is dope. Um, Waves is dope. Fab filter. I oh, use yeah. wave. I have a lot of waves. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. That's, 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 that's yeah, they make good. So I use it all, man. McDSP, Fab filter, UAD. All of the it, only Meek DSP I needed was the I got all those plugins, but uh -huh. I only need is um, the sixty thirty. Okay. The compression that yeah, was the yeah, dopest yeah. compression compressor I ever seen in my life. Yeah, that's it, dope. It helped me. It, it saved. It, it helped me like get the sound that I needed as far as vocals. Right, 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 but, right. It's all about experimenting, man. Like you said, yeah. like it was one day, like pull up a template, pull up a session, and just throw different compressors on there, and then throw different EQs on there, and mess with them, and see what works with you, you know, and whatever you like, and then right. stick with it, master that plugin, you know, get really good at it. So, man, yeah, I got so many records on here, but some of these records are not even mine. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Well, 
other than that, so um, yeah. how is it? How is it? How is it? Um, how is it? How is it like uh, engineering? I mean, mixing um, Antoinette Smith's uh, records. She's an amazing singer. Um, shout out to my boy Daryl, her manager. He's in London right now. He just sent me a couple more sessions to touch up. But uh, oh, Antonique Smith is an amazing singer. She's an amazing vocalist. Um, for y'all that don't know, she's the uh, she was the actress in uh, Notorious. Notorious. She was Faith. Faith. Evans, yeah, yeah, she was Faith in that. <laughs> Um, That's she, funny because Faith Evans was on uh, was here a couple months ago. Oh, word. Um, Apollo Night LA, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I actually saw her, but I didn't get to introduce myself to her because they were busy. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. yeah. And she was like white, pale as white. Well. Like, <laughs> what the hell? Hilarious. I didn't even recognize her, and I was like, For oh, real. I yeah. didn't say nothing. So, so yeah, this is what I pulled up. This is actually off my debut single. It's called Love. So searching too. <laughs> So this is this is this is what I'm dealing with right here. Let me make this bigger real quick. This is what I'm dealing with right here. Even though it's not it's not clean it's not uh it's probably organized, but I should do more stuff to it, you know what I mean? But this is <laughs> this is what I'm dealing with right now. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys can see it. Looks pretty organized to me. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and play uh, play this real. I'm gonna make sure you take a look at this. Oh, I call you. Let me check yeah. it out. See what you think about it. You know what I mean? Let's, let's check out these plugins. Let's see what you're using. See what I'm slipping on. I need to step my game up. <laughs> let's see what you got over here. Yep, I use that. Use that. Use that. Use that. So you track yourself too? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. What do you mean track myself? Like, like you record yourself? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually did that in the at the school. Oh, word. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually did did the whole vocals and everything at the school. Mm-hmm. Dope. Um, did, actually last year when uh, at the graduation. So. Oh, okay. But yeah, like you said, one one key thing that you did say earlier um, was about bringing down the MP3, the two track. Yeah. Um, to give you give yourself headroom, because if you don't do that, you're gonna find yourself yelling and screaming and shouting and rapping louder. Right. And, and then, then starting clipping the so pre. So what do you what do you think about these right here? You think this is like the best like? Because these are not like compressed or anything like that. These are just uh, recorded. Because what I use is the compressor. This is from like mm -hmm. SSLs, and then I use EQs. Yeah. These are just this because do I? Let me ask you this. Yeah. Do I? Um, I use um, I use um, all these plugins as mm -hmm. like as like for my vocal for my vocals. Okay. I use it for like I was gonna say it. I use it as a template. So yeah. I use it like over the and over. EQ and yeah. over and over. Yeah, so yeah. do you do you actually use the same things over and over again, or you oh, gotta yeah. change it? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, all right, so you said a key word template. Like I don't care who you are. You can be a rapper. You could be a singer. You could be an engineer. You could be a mixing engineer keyword is template like you have to have a template and you know every mix I approach pretty much every mix session wise as far as my setup goes with the same template you know and I mix the same way I do my drums first and then I do my bass and then I do my instruments like my pianos my strings my synths all that kind of stuff and then I do vocals last um, but a template is key because it, it, it gives you that familiarity it gives you that um that comfort blanket you know what I'm saying that security right. blanket but uh, yeah definitely using the template is the most efficient way you don't got to set up a session every time you're ready to do a song you just hit Apple new and then select your template and then you already got all your plugins your routing your oxys your reverb your delays you got all that already set you're just ready to record so less less downtime for setting it up and more time to be creative you know so right. yeah template that's that's the thing man that's the key huh? And yeah, it looks like you got your EQs and your compressors and all that. So okay, I want to yeah. get a little listen, but um, if, before we do that, so uh, so yeah, like I also wanted to ask you about like mixing it too. Like, do mm -hmm. you like? Cause no, cause notice I've um, cause I noticed like a lot of people like use beats. Oh, headphones. <laughs> yeah. Like, like no, I'm talking about for the beats. They like sending the beats because it's not sometimes the beats are not tracked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. 
is there a way I can like if the beat is just too too loud uh -huh. and you trying to sit trying to sit sit the vocals on a beat? Yeah. Because what I use, I don't use it on here, but I use a track spacer. Okay. I don't know if you know what that is, but uh, no, I'm not sure familiar with track spacer. So this is track spacer. So this is what I use, like, like, cause this is the knob that I use, cause I usually have like certain like um, templates of mm -hmm. this. So let's just say I had this up here, and um, let me have them show this real quick. Let's just say I had this up here, and I make a bus. Mm-hmm. I use the wrong keys. So I make a bus from the beat. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just uh, <laughs> trying to. Uh, he trying to get the secrets, y'all. He trying to get the juice. That's what he trying to do. Oh, but before that, we got a caller. <laughs> Oh, before that, we got a caller. Let me just go ahead and introduce the caller. Caller, you on the air with the only hip hop show, with the only hip hop squad. We got Trey Harris in the building. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, what's happening? This is Heron Rodriguez, and I'm calling from Los Angeles, California. Okay. What's okay. going on? How, How you doing? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm great, man. This is my first time um, checking out the show, man, and um, I'm really learning some, you know, some some valuable tips. I'm an artist. Well, like I'm. I'm a songwriter and artist, but I'm mainly a recorder, and I don't know a lot about the um, like the mixing um, prospect and what what goes in, and um, you know what makes engineers so good. So, I mean, y'all teaching me a lot of things tonight. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you tuning in, man. So, what what things you learned so far? Uh, well, when y'all was talking about how um, about the leveling of the EQ. And I didn't, I didn't know that um, pretty much mastering is like the same thing as like mixing. Like I thought, I thought like mastering was this like this like mythical thing where they like take what you got mixed and they like put it in some sort of like <laughs> oh. like like machine and press a button and it comes out clean or whatever. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's it's not necessarily that, but I mean, it's not really the same thing as mixing. Mixing is a little bit more in depth. Um, mastering once they get the you know the mix files from the mixing engineer mastering they take that 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 record and they they just take it to one last final level they might get another db out of it maybe um they might add a little stereo width and make it a wider bigger mix um or they might add a little knock a little bit bottom end so the drums hit harder um but uh all of that is really done in the mixing stage um because you have all the files separated so you have yeah. more control um mastering is only getting it as a two track you know, so uh, they're very limited as far as what they can do on their end. But well, um, yeah. well, can I ask you something? Yeah, what's up? All right. Well, it ha has there been any like like uh, popular like hip hop albums that have been like that have that have had a great success without being mastered? Um, I mean, I'm sure. That, yeah, I mean, a lot of records, a lot of songs you hear that go viral right now. Like we're in a viral stage. We're in a really big social media. Um, time in our lives right now where whether it's YouTube or whatever like people are putting records out without record deals you know um, they're getting signed off of YouTube and different you know blogs or whatever on the internet they're not getting their some of them not even getting the records mixed they're just putting out the little rough that they did in a little closet in the bedroom you know what I'm saying? And man, then it, it gets horrible, man. And it gets 30, 40 million plays and then it's the biggest record in the clubs and then they get a record deal three months later. Like so that's that that happens a lot these days. Not everything is even getting mixed. Yeah. Um I, I obviously I, that's my lifeline. So I think of course you should get your songs mixed and obviously the song is gonna sound better anyway. But um it's not you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's people they're blowing up without getting stuff even mixed or mastered. So it's not the final, you know, be all, you know, so Okay, word. Well, yeah, man, uh, that's pretty much it, man. Um, I just moved out here from Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, okay. Oh, dope, man. Um, yeah, I follow, I, I just followed the Only Hip Hop Show, and um, Trey, I actually um, had um, hit me you up. up earlier yeah. about the event that's uh, going down, the um, the Plug-In Alliance That's event. right. Yeah, yeah. man, so, so pretty much I'm just out here just trying to network and, you know, just, just 
find who I can to work with, man. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm a songwriter, I'm an artist, you know. Um, okay. If y'all can, just follow me back. Or if you don't even want to follow me, check out the music. If you like the music, man, just let me mm -hmm. know what you think, and maybe we can, you know, link up, do something, you know. Yeah, just send me, send me a link or whatever. Message me a link, and I'll check out the music um, a little bit later, for sure. I'll check it out. I appreciate that. I appreciate you yeah. calling in, brother. Thanks for the call. Definitely. I'll do this every Tuesday. Cool. Oh, for sure, man. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Heron. All right. Thanks, God, bro. All right. Y'all welcome. All right. Yeah, man. So uh, what we're going to do is, where the hell is the music right now? <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. I'm like, where the hell is the music at? Like, <laughs> so, yeah. Let's um let's go ahead and uh, get into it real quick. Mm -hmm. Since I got this Pro Tools right here already set up, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play this uh, a snippet of uh, and let, and you can be the judge of how how the how the whole thing is sound. Okay. Well, I'm a, I'm a warning you now. I don't know these headphones. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be hard to judge. I'm not in my element, but I'll, I'll give you the best I got though. <laughs> Lord, man. So uh here we go. It's just here we go. So this is my verse from uh, Love So Searching 2. So here it is. So search. I believe it's hard to find a chick who's more laid back as me. So search. It's hard to find a woman that's fine to sell as I see. The beauty of her looks and her personality The way she walked these streets In reality, who would have thought A picture perfect in the woman That's about her stuff, while I was caught up In the moment, every time I day one It never works out for some reason I'm the one kept losing now So search Love is a wonderful thing To tell people misuse it Sometimes it takes time to find the right one That matches your personality And a nice one So search Follow your heart before someone decides to abuse it. Love is a wonderful thing when a person. Oh, no, that right. sounds good. Like for real though, that actually that sounds really good. I, I heard the, uh, the 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 delay throws you had on the you know the the bars and shit, and then you had the um, drums sound like they're knocking in these headphones. Um, no, that sounded good though. Yeah, real good. Yeah, it's not even mastered really. This is just right, mixed. Right, right. So um, I'm I'm actually have another verse, but. I was supposed to get a. You heard of this rapper named Noah Jones? Noah Jones? Nah, I, this sounds familiar. I think so. Yeah, he's been around. He's now he's doing it because I was supposed to collaborate with him, but okay. there's a lot of like financial issues. Yeah, you know yeah, saying, yeah. But it's yeah. cool. I mean, because he because he's, his prices went up because he's doing this 200 um 200 um days of collaboration of all oh, these rappers. Okay. And he's been verified on Facebook, so he's yeah, been yeah, doing, making moves. So and dope. he has a documentary and he's already he's already making moves. So that's why I was that's saying, man, I'll just probably have to do it with someone else. So um that's what this is all about. But mm -hmm. you guys will hear the whole song pretty much when the album comes out. You know what I mean? So the song is called Love, Soul Searching Too. Hmm. But if you guys heard uh Soul Searching, I actually performed that um when Stevie Dub and Renee Brown was here. When Maestro, <laughs> Maestro was hosting the show, <laughs> that was hilarious, man. <laughs> Maestro is a hilarious dude. You know, um, a character his name is Maestro. I, I created that character. So <laughs> oh, like, okay, okay. So it's 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 me, like. Oh, actually, oh, oh, all right. I actually yeah, I portrayed like... his character, but he's he's not developing, so he's he's not coming back until he came back last year for uh, dissing all these comedians. I'll show you the Word. I'll show you the video yeah. after this. You know what I mean? But, okay. But yeah, he's just this community. He just does not give a fuck about anybody. Damn. And his motto is just no motherfucking comment, though. That's just that's For his real. thing. So like, oh, okay, yeah, have to yeah, check that video out. Yeah, he's he's a funny person. <laughs> and you know what? Shout out to cousin P, man. He's been coming to the shows every week. Cousin you know P. What I'm saying? My bad, cousin. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and talk to me, <laughs> man. Say some words, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he can say, folks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's get back to it, man. So, um, what do you think I should do better with this with this mix here? Like, what do you think I should do better? Like, I mean, to be like I said, honestly, it sounded pretty good to me. Um, just one final stage you could check would probably be like the the, the level, you know. So maybe Levels. yeah, like it's not necessarily like the individual sounds, but overall level. Like once you got your mix good and 
check for a couple things like stereo width and size and width of the actual mix like is it a big mix or is it sound thin and the best way to do that or compare the overall level is to import like a, just some of your favorite you know records out right now import them into pro tools and a b them go back and forth and see how those records sound that are out on a commercial or you know what i'm saying on the radio or on tv or on films or whatever see how those songs sound right. um, versus yours see if it's competing because it might sound dope when you're not playing anything else as far as like level and overall volume you know what i'm saying so you want to you want to a b it that's called a b and y'all where like you a b another record that's already out that's killing the club or the radio and you want to compare it you know if it's like a similar genre um you want to compare you know your sonics and your your levels and the width and all that the size of the mix you know so that's another thing that's uh, mixers all mixers do that too you know you always want to a b to make sure you're competing because you don't want your record to come on on the radio or at the club and it's 5 dB lower than the, the song that was on before it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You, want it the, you want it to be the loudest record out, you know? And that's what all these artists and all these A&Rs and these labels want too, you know? They want it to be the loudest record. So, yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah. A-B. As far as, like, compression, like, mm -hmm. I always have an issue with, like, compressing the EQs. Mm -hmm. Like... Say it for his instruments like this song right here. So I rather because normally this is how like a lot of people had their had their um EQ set up. I mean mm -hmm. had their um their level set up yeah. to a high high point. Like I don't know if that was compression after wait, they recorded. Wait, 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 I'm talking about the right like, there the was peak in your song? Or what are you saying? No 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 no. I'm saying like as far as recording, like Oh, okay, yeah. Because you know how they recorded like high, like high as fuck. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Like the point yeah. it's like distorted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this like it. a good level like recording? Like, like when you when you um you got your input track in Pro Tools, a good way to check would be the uh, the green meter on your actual track on the screen. Um, right. You want to be between like green and yellow. You don't want to be too low, um, where you can barely see it. You want it to be where it's green and yellow, and not hitting red though. So you want it to stay just above the green and and where it's peaking into the yellow. That's a perfect level. Right. Um, that's not too low and that's not too high. That should give you headroom for any parts that you start getting louder or screaming or whatever. Um, it should give you headroom from not distorting. So right. always check that input. They do it like a checking levels before you know. Before I work with Mario, for instance, like you're working with a legend, so you don't want to mess up. You don't want to mess up a take because you recorded it too hot. So before you start the session, you want to um, do what's called checking levels. So uh, you'll have her, you know, just go through some lines and start belting and start singing her lungs out. Just so you know, when it gets to that, you know, fourth bar of the song where she hits that loud note, you're not clipping, you're not distorting, you know. So checking levels is really important. But yeah, being in that green to yellow um, range or whatever on the on the input track in Pro Tools, that's that's about where you want to be on the right. on the meter, yeah. And also too, like, cause I'm cause I've been learning, hearing a lot of sounds like, cause like the the vocals are like over the beat. Mm -hmm. and it just be loud even it's mastered you know it's just right. like i try to get like the best so sound as possible so yeah. everybody can hear including the the ad libs the right and the um, and the talking parts yeah you can if, if you ever hear a song on the radio y'all and like the vocal is hella loud compared to the beat that's most likely the artists artists love to have the vocals really loud you know so that's why it's good for them to have an A&R or a manager or other people, you know, around them, letting them know, yo, we can still hear you. We can bring it down a little bit without it being too overbearing, you know. So, um, right. um, yeah, artists, artists always want it, their vocal to be louder and louder. You're just like a producer might want their, you know, drums hitting harder and harder, you know. So yeah. the mixer, you know, his job is to, or his or her job is to find a balance between all the sounds, all the levels and all the people in the room that, you know. I'll give you a little bit of this, and I'll give you a little bit of this, and I'll give you a little bit of this, you know, so. Right. So then, to mix it in the, like, to sit the vocals in the beat, mm -hmm. like, like, you EQ and then compress it is another thing, but, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's hard to, like, because sometimes the beat is, like, so loud, not so loud, but, mm -hmm. like, it, it it's kind of, like, mastered. Okay. Do you like do you like mixed um, records with vocals that the that the beat is already mastered around the vocals and you mix the whole record? Most of the time, yeah, uh, I say ninety numbers, yeah, hundred, pretty much all the sessions I mix, I'm mixing the whole thing, you know. So I'm doing the beat and the vocals. Um, 
I remember certain artists. I remember when I was an assistant engineer a few years ago, um, we were doing the Brandy album. Um, she had some records produced by Bangladesh. Um, and Bangladesh only lets a certain mixer mix his beats. So we wouldn't touch those beats, you know what I'm saying? He would send stems, we would just import them and leave them as is. And then we would only mix the vocal on that, you know. So, right. but you know, that's a really rare thing. Um, like I said, usually when a mixer gets in a session, they have free reign to mix the whole, you know, the beat files and the vocal files. They're mixing the whole song. You right. Know, so. Yeah. Man, that was dope, man. So, I appreciate you though, man. Like, yeah. Because like I need help, like. A lot of times, like mixing these re mixing yeah. records, man, shit is like crazy. Yeah, man. But um, I try to find my own style to mix it, mm -hmm. so I can start giving like if I can start giving people sounds like they want to get the same sound, then you know I can get it, I can give it for them. I right. can have them. I can give it to them. It's all saying? about reps, just like with anything in life. Like when I first started mixing, they didn't sound dope, you know, just like with anybody. So. The more you work on it, the more hours you're just messing with Pro Tools and messing with levels and sounds and trying out different EQs and compressors and other plugins or whatever. Like, it's all about reps, man. And you get more and more comfortable with it, and your ear right. just starts. That's the other thing. It takes it takes time for your ear to develop. You know, you like that's that's part of it too. Like, the more you do it, the more you'll start hearing things you never heard before in songs. You know, and then eventually you, you you'll be like. I don't know, like one of my things that kind of drives me crazy is I, I have this thing where I'm always listening as a critic and I don't like that necessarily. I, sometimes I just want to enjoy the music, right. you know, or the artists. I'm a fan of the artists. I want to just hear them. But for some reason, I don't hear words when I listen to music okay. at all. I hear sonics. I hear placement. I hear, like I said, I used to make beats, so I always listen to the beat. If I don't like the beat, I automatically don't like the song. Um, you know what I'm saying? That but I sense. never hear words. I, I have to try so hard. I'll sit there and tell myself, all right, Trey, I'm going to play this song again. Listen to the words only. Ten seconds later, I'm already listening to everything else. I can't do it. It's, it's the craziest thing. So, which is, I guess, is a good thing for what I do, though, because I can sit in a room and loop the same verse over and over and not go crazy because I'm not listening to the words. I'm listening to, you know, like frequencies and other stuff, you know. But, um, right, yeah, right. It's, a, it's a blessing and a curse. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh what was what was some records you were um, mixing um, lately? Um, a lot of like unreleased stuff, so I don't want to say too much because it hasn't come out yet. But um, a lot of like independent artists. I've been doing a few um, developmental and uh, signed artists also, but their projects haven't come out either. But like the Antonique uh, Antonique Smith stuff, um, that was a lot of that was about four or five records we did on that. Right. And then um, this artist named The Reason, uh, he's an independent uh, rock artist. Um, and then just different, I work with a lot of different producers and stuff too in LA and I mix their records that they send out and stuff too. So it's a lot of unreleased stuff, but you know, it's the top of the year and I think people are going to start putting the music out. So I'll be able to share a little bit more information, you know. What about anything new, like new, like upcoming artists or, or, or like new, uh, have you ever mixed any new records that's, that's, um, yeah, I mean, I'm always working with, that's what I'm saying, like, a lot of this is, is spread through word of mouth, so right. actually I'm doing a mix tomorrow for an artist that was referred to me through a producer. Um, I've never heard his music or worked with him before, but I'm, you know, he trusted me to mix his song because of, you know, his homie vouched for me, that kind of thing, so a lot of it's spread through word of mouth. Um, so yeah, that happens a lot too, and that, that's, a lot of my clientele, that's the way it works, I, I'll do you know a mix for somebody and then they'll love it and then they'll tell you know this artist or this manager or this a r hey this guy is like really dope you should check him out and then just new work just comes in like that you know okay so, okay yeah it's a process yeah man so uh normally we would have another guest here and nobody's here so it's just me and you right now so it's like <laughs> come on man this is some crazy man, everybody everybody did stupid but hey, huh? but hey like this is this is what everybody needs to know like everybody right. like all these artists that you guys learn want to learn how to do this shit like like if you guys want to go to interest during school like you got to learn you got to get mm -hmm. to it like you got to know the ins outputs and the inputs you got to know like and the patches too. Like yeah. if you're gonna be working in recording studio, you gotta learn how to use the patch bay, patches a certain way to so the microphones, to the delays, mm -hmm. the reverbs, and all that. Yeah, that's true. And the funny thing about all that, like especially when I was an assistant engineer, that stuff is really important. And it's like 
I don't know what it is with my mind now, but my mind is 100% creative now. And I pretty much lost all my technical knowledge. <laughs> Not all of it, but like a lot of that stuff. I can still do the basics, but like yeah. the way my brain is wired now, I'm always thinking creatively. So I'm thinking like delay throws and vocal effects and just different things to do during the mixing process where my mind's not even thinking about all that technical stuff no more and my my mind can't even comprehend it <laughs> i don't know how to describe it it's pretty crazy yeah yeah man so uh so when um what um upcoming projects are you working on right now um like, like i said it's a couple un unreleased things um with a couple one with okay, warner yeah. brothers yeah one with warner brothers and another with um epic records but uh and then like i said a lot of independent acts and stuff but um yeah, once they can start coming out and putting their EPs and their albums out or whatever, I can dive more into that information or whatever. But um, yeah, just always trying to stay busy, always working. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. So um, so when you used to do you know, like producing or whatever. Yeah. Have you uh? So but like, what what were the what were the like the people like all the artists that you sent beats to before like during the time you produced? What were how did they respond when you when you like? I mean, I had, <laughs> you know I was saying? pretty good. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not like just saying that because it's me, but no, nah, like people would be like, "Yo, you're dope," and I don't know. Like, I still kind of like. I've been thinking about getting back into it, but one of I think I mentioned this last time, but one of my favorite quotes is, you know, what I'm saying the jack of all trades is the master of none. So I don't want to spread myself too thin and be recording, be mixing, be producing, like. I want to master mixing, you know, I want to be the best mixer on earth, so right. I want to focus just on that, even though sometimes I do get the itch to get back into producing, because that was my first passion, but, um, yeah, uh, I don't know, like, I try to stick with the mixing, um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a musical person, I, when I mix, I mix really musically also, um, like I said, I play instruments, I understand notation and theory and pitch and all that, so, um, yeah. Have you ever mixed a record that, like, an independent rapper that sound like someone else? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That, a lot of people sound like other people. Like, uh, they might not want to hear it, but they do. You know what I'm saying? So that happens. Why? I mean, you know, it's just like like I've been listening to a lot of like music late as a late. I've been listening oh. to like um, the newest rap. I've been well, he's not new, but he's. I've been listening to somebody new that I've never heard before. Okay. A D. He's okay. um he's a Compton boy. Like he's uh collaborating with Game and mm -hmm. RJ. Okay. Um I believe YJ. I mean Y Y G. Uh-huh. <laughs> YG. Um he collaborated with the legendary Big Y. Oh, okay. Um who else? He collaborated with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And especially like I've been listening to his music and his his um his um EP Blue Eight Nine. Okay. You know, it just tells about a story how he became like he I'm not even gonna tell about his his mm -hmm. like his real but story. But you say he sounds like somebody else, his style sounds like somebody else, is that what you're saying or No 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 no. no. Oh. I was just listening to artists of the late. Oh, okay. Cause this is the sound that I never heard before. Like cause he kinda of, he does remind me of like I don't wanna say I don't want to say like uh, Lil Wayne, like mm -hmm. old school Lil Wayne. Okay. But but see, he's from the West Coast, so it's like <laughs> yeah. But his more style, he's more lyrical than anybody else. Even okay. though that's even though it's kind of like the trap West Coast sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was kind of it was dope. Well, just to delve more into like the whole sound thing, like I think that's really important. Also, right. is for an artist to start or come out with their own unique sound because like you said there's a lot of biters out there that just jump on somebody else's style or whatever but i think a lot of the more hot artists that are out right now that have just been coming out this last year or whatever all came out kind of like with their own unique sound you know right. that nobody else is really doing so i mean that's like in, for the artists out there i think that's one thing that's really important is just you know to create and develop your own sound you know like don't bite anybody else's style like just come bring something new to the table you know what i'm saying because yeah. it's, it's refreshing and i think that's why it's why? so successful and it gets so many spins and so much plays and streams it's because it's a new refreshing sound that nobody's heard before and it just blows up you know that happens a lot so right. that's important and also too you know like how artists like 
they want the auto tune and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you turn up they reverb so fucking high. Mm hmm. Couldn't understand what the fuck he's talking about. Like what? <laughs> some yeah, pe some people got some crazy sounds right now. Where I'm like, you can barely hear them. Like, yeah, <laughs> like they just they, some people just like like just psychedelia and just craziness and just like phasers and flangers and stuff shifting. Like which is cool. I mean, there's a time it's and a place cool, for everything. But it's yeah. like, I don't know, man. Yeah. I couldn't listen to music like that. You know what right. I'm saying? But. I can understand if it's auto tune and like mm -hmm. it was professionally done. Right. But yeah, some people yeah they do rely a little too much on the retune speed on auto tune. They pull it all the way down to zero. They turn the retune speed up. I was like, yeah. oh, dude. Crazy. Man. That shit is not cool. Right. Like, yeah. That everybody was I mean, doing that years ago, but it ain't you know what I'm saying? That ain't, I don't know about that. now, but like it'll probably be like five years now. It'll be like be a bunch of sound effects. There ain't gonna be words anymore. Ain't gonna be no words. It's just gonna Nobody be instrumentals. Nobody's gonna be saying it. it's just gonna be it's gonna be instrumentals with sound effects. I That's wouldn't be surprised. Like DJs are killing it right now. You know, like yeah. the DJs that tour Europe and Vegas. You right. know, they're the new rock star. They're the new rock star of our generation. 30, 40 years ago, it was rock bands with long hair. Um, but now, like DJs that get three hundred thousand a show a night, they are the new rock stars. And there, there's no words in that. That's straight EDM, straight. Electronic, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's all that type of house music or whatever. So they're killing it. So words, maybe they, they ain't necessary, you know? It's just just about the vibe, the feeling you get with the music, you know? So. Yeah, man. So it's just like when I was, um, not, I wouldn't say coming up because I'm not really famous or nothing. I just, uh, I've been doing music since I was a kid. So okay. it's like, because when I remember like learning how to record and mix and master, it's just like, I noticed that I have a sound like mm -hmm. when I recorded with like mixtapes back in the day and it was okay. just so horrible quality quality like, <laughs> yeah because I used to record like on a uh, on some earphones and use Word. it as a microphone as the microphone yeah the left one right yeah. just the left speaker yeah, yeah it works as a microphone yeah I remember right. doing stuff like that and then also too like and then I have the uh, I use a podcast mic to record myself and oh wow and you know hey we all gotta start somewhere so man like, yeah. yeah it's just it's like it's just a love it's a passion that we all have whether we're rappers singers engineers producers whatever like we all started at a young age messing with some microphones some cables some tape machine right. and then you just you know you, you just develop the passion and invest in it you know. So, and when you come to recording studios, what what what's your favorite studio like? What what's your favorite console to like mix in? I mean, I came up at Larrabee. They have a bunch of SSL 9000 Ks, so um, that's what I came up under. And um, so that would be my favorite board to work on because yeah, that's, that's what my I'm used to. Board too, 9000 yeah. is dope. Yeah. I just got into it. Um, I just went back to the 9000 um couple couple weeks ago and record. Okay. I think it was this song. Okay. But it was another song in my as well, but I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. yeah, man, I loved it. And yeah. I also went to uh, Duality. That yeah, dude. Yeah, I worked that, on the Duality for you. That shit was dope. Buddy. Yeah, Duality is a dope too. I like. I mean, I'm an SSL person. You got Neves. You got um, Amex. I couldn't really get into Neves. It's just it's mm -hmm. kind of. It's the same thing as SSL, but right. it's just more different. I mean, I mean, it's just yeah, it, it's all it's all Coke, Pepsi, you know. It's yeah. it's Mercedes, BMW. It's they all get the job done, and just it depends on what you prefer, you know. Right. So it's the same same tool, just different different buttons here or there, different layout, but it, it all gets the same job done, you know. It just has a different characteristic as far as the sound goes, you know. Each one gives you a different thing. Of course. Um, but uh, yeah, I grew up under SSLs and I went to Full Sail back in Orlando, so they had SSLs there too. So that's the board I'm the most familiar with, definitely. Yeah. But um, yeah, man. Did you um, graduate from um, any like recording school to get a degree or anything? Oh yeah, so like, I just went to Full Sail, or not just, but I went back in like 2007, graduated in 2008 with a degree in uh, recording arts. Um, that's what I graduated last year with with a yeah. it was an associates. It was an yeah. associates, right? Yeah, yeah, that's associate. what I got too. Yeah, it was 12 yeah. months. It was like a full time school, in and out. They got you in and out real quick there. Um, kind of pricey, but uh, you know I, I learned some stuff and then. It was cool, but I really learned once I moved out here and started, you know, shadowing at a studio that I, at Larrabee Studios. And when I started assisting there, that's when you really get your chops up, and that's when you really learn the craft, you know. Right. Um, 
But yeah, I, it's not necessary, uh, especially if, you know, to the people out there, the artists or rappers or singers. I wouldn't recommend going to recording school. A lot of people do that thinking they want to go just to learn how to record, but you could do that in a weekend at your homie's house. You can learn right. how to do it and save a hell of, hell of a lot of money and, and not have to worry about the trouble because at the end of the day, like you should only be going to those type of schools if you really, really want to engineer or you know, mix, engineer. Because that's where the money know. is at. Cause mm-hmm. that's how that's how that's how a lot of artists you know get their get their fame from because mm-hmm. of these engineers if if it wasn't for these engineers these artists wouldn't be popping right now you know what I'm saying <laughs> right, 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 yeah. not even a, not even the master if it wasn't for the mastering engineers artists would never happen right you know yeah. what I'm I mean yeah we all we all have our, our role you know I mean yeah. all of us can't do it without another. You wow. know, an engineer ain't nothing without an artist. One team, one team. So, yeah, you know I mean? so we all a team, yeah. So. Yeah, so, uh, man, it was a great show, man. Yeah, we done. Pretty much like. Oh, wow, yeah. 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 That went quick. Yeah, that means I had much, fun. Man, we can go all day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, like, you know what, man? Like, I want to ask you this question. Yeah. How do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as one of the most creative mixers of all time. I, I enjoy being a creative mixer. Some mixes are, I call them boring mixers, where they get the session from the artists or, you know, the clients or whatever, and then they just enhance it and make it a little bit better than a rough mix, and then they send it back. But I like to do my own thing. I like to change stuff. I like to do drops, verifies, mutes, vocal effects, throws, swells. I like to have a lot of fun with it because, like I said, I'm a really musical person and, and I, you know, I came up doing the musical thing and making beats and all that. So I like to, you know, be more creative with it. And 99 times out of 100, they love it. And right. and then they're just hooked and they want to come back for more and more sessions and more mixes and stuff. So uh, that's, that's how I want to be remembered as a creative, you know, one of the greatest, dopest creative mixers of all time, you know, so. Yeah, man. Uh... I appreciate you coming through, yeah, man. Brother, man. Anytime, is, time, dude. Dope, man. Like, we have to do another of, show with the rest of the crew that said they was going to be man, here. I mean, All five of them. <laughs> it's actually six. Well, no, yeah, five of them. Uh-huh. Because one, of, cause it's actually seven of us, but it's more. one is behind the scenes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not even here either, so he's... he's well, anytime. Anytime y'all want to... If, if y'all want to bring me back through, I'm not too far, so just hit me up. Let me know. I'll come come back and talk, chop it up some more. Yeah, before I close it out, brother, tell them where you can where, they, where everybody can find you. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm on I'm on Instagram. Trey Harris is the name. Let me spell that for y'all because I got a crazy spelling. <laughs> um, Trey Harris, T R E H Y, last name Harris, H A R R I S. Once again, T R E H Y, and then my last name Harris. So Trey Harris is the Instagram. Trey Harris um, is my website. I just got a website done. TreyHarris.com T R E H Y. And who was the web? Who who done your website again? Audrey did my website. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah Audrey, yeah. I don't Shout out to get, Audrey. I didn't want to get into it, but I just wanted to ask who who did that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Now it came out looking good. We just pretty much finished it up a couple weeks ago. Whatever. I'm actually gonna check it so. out myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Let me know. Yeah. But um, yeah. So TreyHarris.com and then uh, Instagram Trey Harris. And that's pretty much. Pretty All much I use, Google, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Word to uh, Chris Word. Google me, baby. That's, the, that's the thing, you know what I mean? Shout out to Chris Word from Be Like Dream, you know what I mean? Quest Coast, Corona, <laughs> Corona. Genesee, you know what I'm saying? What's up, Genesee? Oh, yeah, yeah Genesee is a friend of yours. Yeah, about that. she's the so one that got me on that show. So real quick, tell, tell me how you how you came uh, came across with her, like how you how you guys know each other. She's just, well, she's a homegirl. Um, we have met at this house party, and then um, we had went to this one club. Her, her Actually, her and Audrey. And then me and my roommate at the time, we all had went to the club one night too. She's cool. Um, she's got great energy, great positive person, you know. So definitely, she's you know homegirl for sure. Yeah, she was here yesterday. Oh yeah, because it was um, VP in the building. Shout out to him. He wanted to collaborate with me and shit. You know what I mean? So <laughs> he has that uh, the trend N word party. Y'all don't say the N word. You know what I mean? That's that's not where I come from. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, I stopped saying it like a long time ago. I'm still working on that. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. You just gotta you just gotta say you gotta replace words like brother. Right, you know, right, like, right. Or dude, my G, yeah, like, homie, whatever. Right, right, you know what right, I'm right. But yeah, I just wanted to guys thank you guys for tuning into the show. Um, it was a pretty much it was a pretty much good experience, you know what I mean. And everybody needs to get that good thing. The only hip hop squad didn't come here today because 
they because um everybody needs to get an education you know what i'm saying about the engineering shit so i mean <laughs> that's why i brought trey harris that's why i brought trey harris you know what i'm saying because he because he is the master of what he does and we just got a lesson we had pretty much we had a class on the show you know what i'm saying this is a, it was a class like you know what i'm saying so uh we're gonna get up out of here you know what i'm saying go ahead and tune in to the next week go ahead and um Check us out on Only Hip Hop Show, our previous uh, previous shows with our previous guests. You know what I'm saying? Man, January 26, we got something coming. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't even funny. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it does have something to do with the previous guest that was that was here last year. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm not gonna tell you anymore. You know what I'm saying? But uh, this is Laron Pierce and. Thank you guys for watching it, the only hip hop show. Now I'm gonna play this last song. Well, this song, my only song that I performed last night at on Big Mike's uh, open mic. It was a horrible experience, you know what I'm saying? But I did. At least I held my own. I did. I did a good job. Cousin P was there. He probably gonna tell you to next week, you know what I'm saying? If he is able to speak, you know what I'm saying? But you know. But um. This single is called Resurrection. I'm actually just got confirmed that my boy Mad Manny is just really is going to be releasing a single with Richard Evans, formerly known as Juice McCain, and my favorite rapper, The Game. It's called City Lights. So he's going to be featured on my debut single, Resurrection. So uh, go ahead and check it out. Have a good night. Yo, yo, y'all ain't seen it coming, huh? It's piss, it's piss. This is the moment I changed my appearance Changed my style, there's nothing more than my adherence Possibly rectify my progression for greatness Tantalize people's souls while they are famous Music has changed, but I never change how I use it Instead of auto-tune, I would rather chop in the screw it Revenge is the best success as I go through struggles Obstacles, what you call it when you grind and you hustle Rose up from the dead, came back as a new person New looks, new attitude with a relevant purpose To live life as a man I was destined to be an underground MC that has goals and dreams everyone hating me now loving me for some reason it's like they choosing science as an angel or demon actually about actions not words and I show it this is my true resurrection damn right and you know it know it ever since I've been resurrected the rewards on me walking up and down in the streets yeah so lonely action speaks louder than words and I show it this is my true resurrection know it ever since I've been resurrected the rewards Saw me walking up and down in the streets, so lonely. Action speaks louder than words, and I show it. This is my true resurrection. Know it. I conquered almost everything Achieving a lot of success was astonishing My yeah. parents did an excellent job raising the son uh -huh. Who excels to not have babies or do drugs uh -huh. In 2015 I graduated with a degree It took me years to become a better MC Honing my craft and knowing my talent I knew yeah. I had it in me and took that challenge uh. I did it all at the age of 23 That's yeah. how many years I've been single I never missed a beat huh? Resurrection is the best thing Happened to me, transformed to a new man I wanted to be Executing every plan with no questions asked Take my opportunities before it don't last Sacrifice and all so I can just have it all You can do one of these two choices, rise or fall Ever since I've been resurrected, the reward's on me Walking up and down in the streets, yeah, so lonely Action speaks louder than words and I show it This is my true resurrection, I know it Ever since I've been resurrected, the reward's on me Walking up and down in the streets, so lonely Action speaks louder than words and I show it This is my true resurrection, know it, know it, know it.